Hello everyone and I hope you're all doing very well. So today we're looking at doing an IFR approach and landing in our F-16C. So that means approach with IFR, IFR rules. We can't see the runway. We've got complete blacked out visibility or white out visibility. We have to rely completely on our instruments until the last minute. We're going to use two instruments to do this. TACAN to get us within about 10 miles of the runway and on the runway radial and then we're going to switch over to ILS which will take us all the way down to literally the last few feet of the runway. The plan is I'm here, I'm about 30 miles out of from the runway, the runway is Kasab here. First we need to get the details so click on Kasab. We need to find out the TACAN, it is 86 X-ray call sign KSB. We've done a full video on TACAN already so we're just going to do it, we're not going to explain it. Next is ILS. ILS is here, 110.30 megahertz, identifier IBKS. The KSB and the IBKS are Morse code identifiers that we may or may not look at later if we have time. Runway, we're going to be landing as on 19. Only runway 19, which is here, is accessible via ILS. So that's the information. I'm going to write that down. What I also need is the true course of the runway. So 19 is not accurate enough. We need more accurate than that. I'm going to draw a ley line from here to here. Look at the tops of the screen. We can see a true course of 194 degrees. So that's what we're going to set as our course line. So back in the cockpit here, the first thing we're going to do is set our tacken up, drive to within about 10 miles, at which point we want to be 300 feet AGL for every mile out from the runway. So about 10 miles when we're going to select our ILS, we want to be about 3,000 feet AGL. We can ensure our barometric altimeter is set to AGL. We are by contacting the tower and requesting landing, he will come back to me with wind direction and whatnot and a QFE. Excuse me. So we will be setting our QFE on this altimeter here. Now, it just so happens that he's already got 2992 because he's at basically at sea level. So in this case, we're already set up. But if you're in a mission where the airbase is not at sea level, then there's a good chance you are going to have to change this to the correct QFE of the runway, otherwise you're going to have a very nasty accident. To change the QFE, in case you don't know, you turn that knob there, there is the respective QFE in inches mercury imperial. Okay, so we're going to go, the boys have all spawned in, they're all behind me, we're going to do this pretty much in formation. We're going to be changing our TACAN and our ICLS through our ICP here and our DED here. Uh, I have these buttons here set up to my numpad on my keyboard, so I may use the keyboard or I may use the mouse depending how much time we've got to go. So guys, we're going to unpause. First thing is keep your speed down so we've got plenty of time to arrange stuff and talk. I'm going to neutralise. I could use an autopilot here, but I'm not going to bother. Most importantly, lights on so I can see something would be nice. Next, we're going to set up our TACAN and our ICLS, uh, sorry, our ILS. So we can do this from far out. We just can't use our ILS until a bit later on. TACAN wants to be to transmit receive so we can get a bearing and a heading. So let's try that. That was DCS sequence there. We're now going to go DCS down to the station. We're going to type in 84 enter. We're now tuning into 84 x ray. And it hasn't worked. Can you guys tune into 84 x ray? Because mine's just stopped working. Yeah, mine's not on. Almost certainly that is a line of sight issue with our airbase. So once we get line of sight past a hill, we should get that. We are low to be this far out. So I'm not going to worry about that now. Next, we're going to tune in and we can change our band here as well, but uh, we don't need to. Uh, there we go. I'm on BKSB. It was just a line of sight issue. Next, ILS we need to set. So DCS down. We're going to set the ILS freak to 110.3. Enter and the course as well to get on our make sure that we get on our ILS radial so we're going to go 192 the reason I've got 192 instead of 194 is that the F-16 works on magnetic bearings magnetic is different to true F-10 that we saw was true the magnetic deviation in Persian Gulf where we are is minus two degrees between true and magnetic so I have to minus two to 192 to make this work accurately so we've got the ILS and the TACAN on at the moment. Next we need to work our way onto the radial with TACAN. So over to TACAN, we're going to press HSI and again until we've got TACAN. We are 19 miles from the airbase. The airbase is that direction there. We need to set a course to get on the TACAN radial. We need to turn this knob here with our mouse scrollable to 192, not 194. Remember, magnetic deviation of minus 2 degrees from true to 
uh, to, to magnetic. Right, I'm going to have to pause it here, guys. Sorry. I've got to explain all of this and what this means. So that is the direction we're heading, 130. That is the bearing pointer to the Takan station. That is basically the runway near enough. That is our selected course line of 192 with two degrees off true for the magnetic deviation. That there is our course deviation line. That is how far we are off our course, desired course, of 192. The idea is we want to neutralize this course deviation line with the course pointer here, and then have that neutralized with our bearing pointer here. And when they're both neutralized, then have all three neutralized with our 12 o'clock position here. If we can get that, which takes a bit of flying, but once you've learned how to do it, it's okay. We have to do that before 10 miles so that we are perfectly on radial while watching our altitude, ensuring that we are around 3,000 for AGL at the 10 mile marker. And out of interest, if you can hear beeps, that is we've got the Morse code identifier for the Takan station, which we can uh, turn up and down here. We've also got the Morse code for the ILS as well. Um, those are our, our identifiers in case you need to check that you are on the correct stations. We're going to miss that out today. Uh, okay, so I say we just get on with it. I'm pausing now, guys. So we're going to fly the plane heads down IFR. There's no point in looking out the window anymore. Everything, the information we need is here. So we've got to worry about our airspeed, which is okay. Between 250 and 300 ideal at the moment. We're going to work our way down to 3,000 AGL feet. We are going to uh, concentrate on the HSI to make sure that we merge our course deviation line. The course deviation line is off left to the course pointer at the moment. That means we need to go left uh, in terms of direction until we get the neutralization. We're too low now, so we're now going to level out. Sorry, we're at altitude now. We're probably in the clouds, so there's no point of looking out the window anymore. Speed is good. And heat heading this direction. We now have 16 miles to get to the airbase. <clears throat> this is a very stressful thing to do, and it's not something I advise unless if you have a heart condition. Find me altitude, so we need to dive down. That's no good. Whoops, we've nearly got a deviation merged there now, so we now need to turn right aggressively to get the neutralization of the course deviation line with the course pointer, with the bearing pointer in the 12 o'clock position. I'm just about going to hit it bang on, which is nice. And I'm going to neutralize there. Okay. Oh, sorry guys, I have to pause to explain. So we're fully neutralized, we're on altitude, we're at the correct speed, we are neutralized the course deviation line, the course pointer and the bearing pointer in the 12 o'clock position just before 10 miles at 14 nautical miles. Just to prove that to you, I can see that I'm here. Wow, Ripcord's got far ahead. Uh, we are here, I'm heading currently 194 exactly. So you can see that is where that course deviation of two degrees is important. Um, and I am, as I'll prove here, on radial. Actually, I'm slightly off as you can see there, but that's probably my bad flying more than anything else. Next, we are going to continue uh, to 10 miles where we will switch over to ILS. So, neutralize ourselves there. In fact, there's no harm in starting to look at the ILS now. In fact, no, sorry, we're going to keep on TACAM for a little longer. I'm starting to uh, work my speed down now. We're going to get on speed once we're uh, beyond 10 miles, sorry, within 10 miles, I meant to say. We're 12 miles now. We're slipping slightly off the tack end course there. That's my mistake, so we're going to correct with the left. 11 miles, I think we can switch over to ILS now, so press this button until we get PLS. PLS now, sorry guys, I'm going to have to pause again. We have now new symbology on the ADI and the HUD. We have now this line here. The vertical line is the localizer. This is a guide to keep us on the correct azimuth to the course of the radial of the runway. This here, the left to right line, is our glide slope. This will keep us at the correct glide slope, the correct altitude per our distance out. So the idea is simply to neutralize both of these lines on our own ship there and follow that all the way down to the runway. You can use that or you've got the same thing on the HUD. You can see here we've got the glide slope here and the localizer there that is our path marker where we are traveling now we get an extra bonus in this aircraft that we don't get in a lot of aircraft we get a lovely little guide this is called our ILS steering queue the idea is this steering queue here the circle we want to maintain that inside our path market if possible and that will help us out it's kind of hard for me to display describe how it helps you how you how it helps you out it's just something you have to trust and it's a really good thing and I suggest Using it, so if I put my, better put my controls on now so you can see what I'm doing. Maybe most of the work's going to be in throttle and trim, but some work will have to be done on the control stick, obviously in terms 
of roll. So we're all set up. We're at 3,000 feet. We're at 10 miles out. We're now going to go HUD. We could fly the plane like that, but we're going to fly the plane like that because it's going to be just be a bit prettier and cooler. I'm pausing now. So now we're within 10 miles. We've got to think about getting on speed. So we're coming down on the throttle. And we're trying to get our tadpole, this is often known as command steering cue, inside of our um, path marker like thus. Here's where we need to start trimming because of our speed. Whoops! Silly cap. Messed up. As soon as the camera goes on. As soon as the camera goes on. Let's see if we can rescue that. Rescued it. Just kind of, sort of. Get down. Now, as we start to get on speed in terms of landing, there will be lots of deviation, lots of trim work to do. To get on speed, we're going to use our uh, angle of attack error bracket at the bottom of the HUD and our angle of attack indexer on the left, as shown in the VFR landing tutorial. Follow the tadpole, follow the tadpole. The tadpole knows all, it knows better than me. More trim. I want a quick check down at my gear landing lights. I've got to check three green, but I don't dare do it yet. We're now on speed, I just need this up a bit. Quick check, three green. Oh, Ozzy just blew up. You fail. Shit, I've just gone out of yeah. I've got excited and I'm out of parameters. Right, what I've done is I've gone too low because I'm a silly billy, so I just need to uh, get myself back here. Come on, Cap, we can do this. See the cross through my... Um, Path markers because I've just got too far out of parameters because I was just being a bit of an idiot. So I'm back in parameters now. I'm going to try and regain my tadpole whilst staying on speed. Right, the bend is over. Now it's prudent never to go above the glide slope. If you're a good pilot, you'll never go above the glide slope. As you all know well, I am not a good pilot. This is really beyond the uh, limit of my skill. Okay, I'm centralised again. Right! Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Still on speed. Still on tadpole. I have to have full trust in the instruments at this point. Do not trust your... Do not trust your um, own initiative. It will probably be wrong. Trust the instruments. Before you do this, it's always a good idea to double check that the instruments match up with the analog instruments downstairs down there but um didn't really have time to do that whoops concentrate lost the tadpole i'm afraid and you can see i punched above glide slope bad cap it happens oh i'm getting into a tank slapper i hate this you get into something called pio pilot induced oscillation when because i've got nothing to look at i've got no world to look at And I'm getting it bad. Chase the tadpole, chase the tadpole, chase the tadpole, chase the tadpole. There's the runway. Right, ignore the interpretation, fly VFR. Now, if you like or follow the interpretation, either will take you down to the runway fine. <gasps> got it back, look, I got the uh, glow slide back perfectly. It just shows if you go off and you get into a tank slapper, don't panic, you can always get it back. You get into a PIO. Alright, shooting for the, uh, the threshold. I'm going to put a little flare in there. Just double checking my three greens. It's uh, something I like to double check. On speed. Ready for flare. Flare. Got to power down. Out of touch. That's okay. Now keep the nose in the air. 12 degrees. Error braking. And work the stabs up. Aft stick. Maximum deflection. But careful not to go over 15 degrees. Nose wheels down. Full air brake on. Dab the brakes. Below 50 knots, nose wheel steering can come on. On slow, take left side. Air brake off. Those were steering on. I've got to go and see what the boys are doing. Stand by. Well done, boys. You made it. Welcome. Come and meet me at the end. Remember, once your nose was steering down, get that um, um, air brake fully out. Oh, you're a bit late there, Warren. You go round, I suggest. Is he going to do it? And where the hell did Cap land? End up. Oh, no, I ran off the edge of the bloody runway because I was out of cockpit. How annoying. Let's go round, sir. Go round. Go round. 
Good job, guys. And that's not an easy thing to do. I mean, in terms of IFR landings, this is an easy plane to do it in. Uh, you go and try that in an F5 or something, it's much harder. Um, but still, you know, you need to be a half-decent pilot to do that. I'll link this mission I've got here to the video so you can download it and have fun with it. It's not even the hardest setting, it's just, you know, average, average uh, difficulty. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. See you later.